Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and in this video we will be talking about the Windows operating systems. So the Windows operating system is the most common operating system that is used in workplaces worldwide. And in this video we will be talking about the different editions, different versions of Windows, their differences, what they are used for, how they are used in the workplace, and we will also talk a little bit about Windows updates and patches, their release cycles, what they mean, and how it's done in the workplace. So if you are interested in this video, or if you want to be more familiarized with the Windows environment, especially in the workplace, please keep on watching. And without further ado, let's get started. So before we dive deeper into the details of Windows, let me ask a question first. Why do you think Windows is most commonly used in the workplace, especially in business and enterprise environments. To me, in my personal opinion and based on my experience, I think Windows is user-friendly and also widely adopted. It's a very popular or one of the most popular operating systems in the world. And it also has a lot of software that's compatible with the Windows operating systems. And it also has a lot of tools that are also built into the operating system that are essential for productivity and management. So the Windows operating system is categorized into different versions. For example, we have Windows XP, Windows 7, 8, Vista, 10, and 11. There are different Windows editions that you should be familiar with, especially as an admin. It's important to understand these versions and know the features that will be applicable in your business setting. First, we have Windows Home, which is made for home users. It has basic features for home use. Next is Pro, which is made for professionals. It has additional advanced features like BitLocker and Hyper-V, which are needed for business settings. Last is the Enterprise version that is used by large businesses and has even more advanced features, including advanced threat protection and app blocker. The main thing you have to remember for the different versions is that Home can't join the domain and BitLocker isn't available. Only Pro and Enterprise have the option, so if you have a new computer and you want it to join the domain, make sure you have the proper Windows version. So in the workplace, typically we are using the Windows desktop environment and also the Windows server environment for IT professionals. So in the workplace, we typically see Windows Pro or Windows Enterprise, and that is because they have the features that we require in an enterprise environment. So both of them, Windows Pro and Windows Enterprise, have the ability to join the domain, and they also have BitLocker compared to Windows Home. So they are typically used in the environment. Windows Pro is more commonly used because it has all the features that is needed for a desktop user. But sometimes, if we have executives or power users, and if we also have the budget, we could also use Windows Enterprise because it has more advanced features. So aside from regular computer use and desktop use, we also use the Windows OS for the servers. Of course, if we are using Windows desktops, we should also use Windows Server to manage all of those Windows computers in our infrastructure. So think of it as the backbone of the IT infrastructure in your organization. Windows servers are crucial to our organization if you're managing a Windows environment because it handles user authentication, host applications. Most importantly, it ensures that everyone can access resources like files and printers securely. So just like the Windows desktops, there's also different versions of Windows Server. We have Windows Server 2016, 2019, 2022, and so on and so forth. So those are a few examples of the versions we have for the Windows Server. And for Windows Server Edition, examples would be Windows Server Standard and Windows Server Data Center. So the Windows Server Standard is usually used for business setup, for smaller to medium-sized setups. It has all of the basic features that you will need for a server. The Windows Server Data Center is what you need if you are heavy on virtualization because it has all the ad more advanced tools and features. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the differences between Windows Desktop and Windows Server. 
So to get started, the main difference is when installing the Windows Desktop and Windows Server is the minimum requirement of storage that you need for both operating systems. So there's a huge difference between them. So for example, I'm on Windows 11 Desktop and Windows 11's minimum requirement is 64 gig for you to be able to install the Windows Desktop operating system. While the Windows 2022 server's minimum requirement for storage is 32 gig for you to be able to install the Windows Server. So if you notice, the Windows Desktop has a bigger minimum requirement for the storage compared to the Windows Server requirement, which is around 30 gig difference and that's almost double of what the Windows Server is requiring. And that is because the server core installation requires less disk space than a full server with desktop experience installation. So if you are planning to install a Windows server and a Windows desktop, just keep in mind that you would need a much bigger storage requirement for the Windows desktop compared to the Windows server, which is requiring less than the Windows server. Also keep in mind that it's not the same for different versions of Windows. So they might have different hardware requirements. For example, Windows 10 minimum requirements for storage space is 32 gig to be able to install Windows 10. But for Windows 11, it requires 64 gig to install Windows 11. So before installing the different operating systems, whether it's Windows Desktop or Windows Server, check on the versions for the minimum requirements to make sure that your hardware can accommodate all of that. Also, another reason why Windows Server is so much lighter than Windows Desktop is that it only installs the essential server components and it eliminates all of the user interface and other desktop features that are not, not necessary for most server functions. So as you can see here, this is the Windows Server 2022 image. And if we go to the programs in here, there is not a lot of programs compared to Windows Desktop. So as you can see in here, we only have Windows Admin Tools, which is needed in IT and Management. We only have the, Win the Microsoft Edge as the browser. Mostly Windows programs that are just necessary for Admin Tools like the Command Prompt, Control Panel, Task Manager, Compared to Windows Desktop that comes with various pre-installed applications like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Photos, and more, which are not usually included on a Windows server. Okay, so we already talked about the different editions and versions for Windows desktops and servers. Now there's also a special edition of Windows Server that is also for special needs or requirements. So we have this what we call the LTSC or the long-term servicing channel and it's one of the special edition of Windows that is different from Windows Desktop and Windows Server. So the LTSC is special because they are used for computers or machines that require stability with minimal updates. With LTSC, you get long-term support for critical updates but without the frequent feature changes that come with standard versions of Windows. So the earlier versions of LTSC, like 2019 and earlier, have a 10-year life cycle, meaning that support will end 10 years after the release date. But this change with the latest LTSC versions, like 2021 and later, these releases have a 5-year life cycle, meaning that support will end 5 years after the release date. So this is perfect for machines that require stability because you have around five years before you do a major upgrade on the operating system. So if you're wondering what those computers or machines or situations are, those are computers that you're that are usually used 24 7 so these are the computers that you don't want to be bothered by the monthly updates for example kiosk computers atms in my experience we use this for our security camera computer they need to be up 24 7 and they only display cameras and all those critical machines as well that needs to be running and needs to be stable and consistent and it's usually running a very special software that can't be interrupted by a constant Windows update that might break the software. 
And as for the Windows update, Windows releases monthly patch and updates every second Tuesday of the month. So these are more of the feature updates to fix bugs, for example. So the second Tuesday of the week is widely known in IT as Patch Tuesday for Windows. Okay, so just a quick practice. Let's just take a look at the Windows version of your machine. So on the search bar at your taskbar, you can type in WinVer enter and it'll show you the windows the current windows version that you have so for example for mine i have windows 11 and it'll tell you that it's version 24h2 and this is the os build so if you want to know what version of operating system you have and what edition this is where you will find it it'll say windows 11 home operating system or windows 11 enterprise and if you notice in here if you look into the version, you will see numbers in here and H2, for example. So that is typical for Windows. That's how they number and how they name their version. And that has also a meaning. So I'm going to go on my Windows server and let's check the Windows version for this one. So this is Windows Server 2022 and the version is 21H2. So as you can see, there is a pattern in here. This version says 21H2. So it has the H2 in here. And then let's go back to the Windows desktop. So it also has H2 and it starts with two digits in here, which is the same pattern as the Windows server. So there is a reason why the naming convention is that and I'm going to explain in a bit. But if you pay attention, this represents the patching cycle for Windows. So Windows H1 and H2 refer to the semi-annual release cycle of feature updates for Microsoft's Windows operating system. So the naming convention is tied to half of the year the update is released. So if you just have an update and if you see H2, it means the second half of the year. So this where the update is released between July and December. So if your version has 21 H1, that's the first half of the year, which are the updates released between January and June. So this naming convention helps IT admin and users to identify the timing of updates and manage deployments more effectively. So this is where you'll also see if you are behind the updates and if you need to update for compliance. So you might be wondering and asking what H2 means and what H1 means. So H1 updates typically focus on new features and functionality enhancements, while the H2 updates are generally smaller and prioritize refinements, security improvements, and stability. So based on my Windows version in here, I had the 21H2, which means that this was updated between July and December of last year. So I got the security improvements updates. Okay, so these updates are typically distributed via Windows Update 2. So if we check our Windows updates here, for example, this is where you can see if you have updates available that you can install. As you can see in here, I have like pending install for updates. And also this is where you can check your update history. Like when was the last time that you had an update? So I'm going to check on my Windows desktop in here because Windows desktop typically has a lot of updates because it has a lot of features and programs. So as you can see, I have like pending restart to install some of the updates that I missed. And if you go to update history in here, you can see in here the last time that I had I had updates just like December 29th was the last time I had successfully installed updates. So this is where you can see where you're behind with your updates. Also, it's very important to discuss the EOL or end of life for the Windows operating system. As an IT professional, it's also important to be up to date to when the EOL for the edition and version of the Windows that you have is so that you'll know when to upgrade your current operating systems before it becomes obsolete or end of life or out of support. For example, if your company is still using Windows 10 in your environment and there is a new Windows version that was released, like Windows 11, just be mindful and be up to date on when that older operating system will be end of life. For example, if you have Windows 
10, you should know that Windows 10 end of life will be this year sometime in October. And after that, Windows 10 might be out of support and Microsoft might want you to upgrade to Windows 11 after that. It's really critical to know these stuff so you know when to upgrade so you can schedule it properly because a major upgrade like this is sometimes not that easy to deploy in a big business setting because first you have to check if your current hardware or computers are compatible with the latest software upgrade or operating system upgrade. You have to check if your computers are compatible with Windows 11 if you still have Windows 10. So you also have the computer hardware to consider. Because if you really need to upgrade to Windows 11 and your current computers are not compatible, it means that you need to have to buy new computers first before being able to upgrade to Windows 11. So that's a totally different story, but that's also a factor to keep in mind when you are dealing with this kind of upgrades and operating system issues. So before we end today's video, I would like to ask some follow-up questions to review our topics for today. So what Windows Operating System Edition should we use for desktops for general use? What about for critical systems that require stability? How about for managing the network? Also, if you want to share what Windows Edition and version you are using at work for desktops and servers or maybe for special edition, please feel free to share that in the comment section below. I also want to know what kind of uh, Windows version and edition you're using at work. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys learned something and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.